Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of Sussex Studio. And his question is, does electron flow versus conventional current flow come up as an issue in electronic circuit design using polarized components like diodes, transistors, or electrolytic capacitors, since the actual flow of electrons is one way only through these components? And another student by the name of Steve Tripoli answered the question. And his answer is, well, for me, it's easier to troubleshoot circuits using electron current flow. Also, it's always best to learn the way the current, the electrons, are actually flowing because one day you might come across a circuit where you will know which way the current is flowing and need to troubleshoot it. Anyway, when I started learning electronics, it was tube circuits. Well, I can understand your affinity toward electron flow seeing that you started out with vacuum tubes because to understand a vacuum tube, you do need to follow the electrons. Real quickly, a vacuum tube is an evacuated glass cylinder. It's basically like a light bulb. It has a little filament and that is heated up with some kind of a voltage source. I'll just put a battery here and heats up and it causes electrons to disassociate from their atoms and so they float around inside the vacuum but they can't go anywhere. But then we put a plate, not really on the other end, the plate is really wrapped around the uh, filament, but we put a good strong positive charge there. I'll just represent that with a battery over here. In fact, in early tube circuits, it was a battery. Let's put some voltage here, like, oh, about 300 volts. That's certainly enough to do it. Positive to negative, and now that positive charge is going to attract those electrons through, and they're going to flow through that vacuum. Now, to make a control circuit for amplification, what we do is make a triode. I'm not going to get deep into vacuum tubes, but the basic triode has a grid which is actually wrapped around the filament between the filament and the plate, which wraps around uh, the outer side. And if we put a small negative charge here, that will tend to block the electron flow. So if we have no charge here, the electrons will flow. And if we put a little bit of a small negative charge here, it will block those electrons. And we can actually finally control how those electrons flow by how much negative charge we put there. However, once you understand how it works, it's very easy to think of a vacuum tube using conventional flow. We just have a positive high pressure, negative low pressure. Current is going to flow that direction. And if we put a more positive charge on the grid, it's going to flow more. And a less positive, it's going to flow less. So we can still think of it in uh, conventional flow terms. And I have no trouble doing that. But if you like to use electron flow, if that's what you can wrap your mind around, more power to you. And if you want to understand vacuum tubes and other uh, older components, and even such things as the magnetron tube in a microwave, you do need to follow the electrons. So I use conventional current for two reasons. One, I just find it so easy to wrap my mind around it if I just forget about the electrons and just have high pressure, low pressure, current goes from the high pressure to the low pressure and as we go through the circuit we get a lessening, 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 lessening of pressure until we get down to the end. It just works very well for me and it seems to work well for most people and the industry has gone that way to explain flow. In fact, the symbol for a current source is a circle with an arrow that points in the direction of conventional current. When it comes to active components like a diode, what direction does the arrow point? The direction of conventional current. How about a transistor? NPN transistor, arrow points in the direction of conventional current. PNP transistor, arrow points in the direction of conventional current. So it's just what the industry uses as a standard. And academia used to be split. Some people taught electron flow, some people taught conventional flow. I went through electron flow to begin with, and then we got into solid state devices, and the instructor came in and said, remember that electron flow? Forget it. We're going to use conventional flow now. So I had to learn to go both ways. So most of academia has settled on conventional flow too. Is it better? Well, it is for me. Is it for you? Well, as Mr. Tripoli said, to understand these circuits and to troubleshoot them down to the component level, you may need to follow the electrons. So you need the flexibility to be able to do that. But for the most part, you can go whichever way works for you. I don't really like you trying to use electron flow because with conventional flow, we have positive is high pressure, negative is low pressure, current flows from the high pressure to the low pressure. 
With electron flow, I have to say, well, this is more negative, that's less negative. The electrons flow from the more negative to the less negative. It's just, I can't just wrap my mind around it the way I can high pressure, low pressure, current flow. I have to use a different mindset. I can do it, but I just find this so much easier. But does that make it superior? For me, yes. For you, maybe not. If you wrap your mind easily around the idea of electron flow, be my guest and use it. And as Mr. Tripoli said, you do need to understand it. Sometimes you may come to a circuit if you get to working with vacuum tubes, which are not dead, and like there's the magnetron in a microwave and there's some tube circuits still out there and they're even making a comeback in some circles, you do need to follow the electrons. So thanks for that answer, Mr. Tripoli. I really like the interaction and I hope that cleared some things up. So does using conventional flow versus electron flow in engineering cause an issue? No, you just pick one and stick with it. And just remember the current flows in the direction of arrows and diodes and transistors and the like. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel and subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.